When I was younger, I actually really wanted to know how much water actually is there on our planet Earth. As a matter of fact, if I were to kind of suck out all of the water and put it all into one big bowl of ice, how much would I get? Today you're going to find out how much it is and you might be actually pleasantly surprised. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So thankfully we have games like Universe Sandbox 2 that allow us to experiment and to find out what would be different about our planet if we took something away from it or if we basically just changed its composition. Now luckily in materials here it's very very easy for us to manipulate this water slider. You can add more water or you can remove water completely. But most importantly, you can actually see how much water there is originally when you just kind of create a new planet Earth. So if I place planet Earth orbiting around this other planet Earth, I get to see that it actually has 1.35 times 10 to the power of 21 masses uh, or kilograms of water. And here it's in liquid and solid state because it is both liquid and an ice right here. It's also in um, aerial form uh, in our atmosphere, but we're not going to worry about this just yet. So let's imagine that we now are going to take away all of the water and put it into an, a solid object orbiting around, around our planet Earth. How big do you think it's going to be? And how big do you think it's going to get if we compare it to other objects in our solar system? So make your prediction right now. How big do you think it will be if I place it as a new moon around our planet Earth? And um, basically then we're going to collide it with planet Earth just so we can return back all of the water we just took away from it. And this of course will be done just so we can actually see if it's if it's a real amount, if it's actually as much as we think it is. So I'm going to start a new simulation here from, um, from planets Earth and Moon. We're going to go into Earth and just remember this number again, 1.35 times 10 to the power of 21. And we're going to basically take all of it out. So this is a completely dry planet Earth now. I'm now going to add a little asteroid orbiting around our planet Earth and name it just water because this is essentially what this is. This is going to be represent representative of all of the water on our planet Earth. Now, as you can see, the mass here is a little bit lower or actually a lot lower than it should be. It's currently at 1 times 10 to the power of 18. And this is what this rock looks like. Now, first of all, let's go in here and change all of this composition to water. So it's all going to be just water. And now we're going to increase its mass until it gets to 1.35 times 10 to the power of 21. It might take me a long time if I do it this way, so I'm just going to cheat a little bit and increase it manually by doing the following. Okay, we're almost there. 9, 1.35. Here we go. Okay, you can kind of see it's still growing. That's because it's adjusting its size in comparison to its mass. But here is our water bowl. If we were to suck out all of the water from the surface of our planet Earth, it would create a very large ice bowl. And let's just check that this is all ice. Yeah, it's all solid ice. And this ice bowl would be this big. It's still kind of growing, so I'm going to accelerate time a little bit just so it can stabilize its size because it's basically trying to use its density or water density and uh, combine itself into a solid stable uh, bowl that's about 617 kilometers in radius. Now, how big is this in comparison to our planet Earth and in comparison to our moon? Well, let's find out. We're going to go into the chart right here and you'll get to see how big this is. So this is our Earth, this is our moon, and this is all of the water in one single ice bowl. That is a lot of water when you ask me. At least that's what I think. I'm not sure about you, but to me, this looks like a very large dwarf planet. As a matter of fact, this is actually almost as big, if not as big as Ceres. I'm going to go back here and let's actually add Ceres, which is one of the more well-known and more popular dwarf planets that we've visited and orbited around and uh, studied for quite a long time. Let's add Ceres and find out how big Ceres is. As a matter of fact, if I go back here, you'll realize that Ceres is actually smaller in size than our water bowl. Now, does that make sense? Well, let's find out by colliding the bowl back with our planet Earth, just to see if we get all of the water back. So what I'm going to do now is 
I'm going to take this ball and stop it completely and it's going to collide back into our planet Earth and return all of the water and we're just going to watch our planet and see if, if all of the water comes back where it used to be originally. So let's go into actions here and we're going to give it zero velocity. It's now going to start falling into our planet Earth and let's make this a little bit slower so we can get to see the collision in all of its glory here it comes it's going to fall somewhere in east africa and let's do this a little bit faster but yeah look at the size of that thing this is how big our water is this is how large if you combine all of the oceans if you combine all of the water and ice caps into one this is how large the object will be to me this is actually mind-blowing if you were to tell me that when i was much younger if you were to tell me that this is how big our all of our oceans on our planet earth are i would probably not believe you but this is science and here we go i'm actually going to zero velocity this again because i don't want this to collide too fast here it comes it's falling onto the horn of africa i believe this is ethiopia and uh it is combining into our planet and we're about to reacquire all of our, all of our oceans and we're about to get the liquid water back again I can double check this by going into materials and right here it says 1.35 times 10 to the power of 21 this is exactly how much we had before you can see the oceans are returning the temperature is just the right temperature for this to be liquid water um, and let's see if the entire planet earth is going to be covered back in liquid water again now I noticed that some spots are actually missing water and that's I think because we have now created this very very large crater that actually might get filled with a very large ocean or a large sea as well. So some of the water volume has actually been displaced just a little bit but for the most part most of the regions around the world have reacquired the water just as they used to have it. Except of course for that large... Um, very large crater that we've created that has stolen some of the water from some of the regions like for example right there in Indonesia okay I'm going to skip some a uh, few few years here sometime we're going to or at least a few months until all of this cools down we get to see what the surface of earth looks like later on and two months later so this is the surface of earth there's actually a few more ice caps around the world including Japan and most of the rush is covered in ice uh, but most of the water has returned and so this is essentially how much water was missing but as you can see a lot of it is actually displaced here as well because we've actually created this new crater that has taken away a bit of volume from um, from where it used to be around the world so yeah so this is essentially just to show you the size of all of the liquid and solid water um, from our planet in one single object. Now, before we finish this, I actually wanted to try something else. I'm going to go back to the original um, solar system simulation and I'm going to re-add this again. And here is our water object again, orbiting between Mars and Jupiter. And the reason I did this is because I actually wanted to give you an idea of how large this object is in comparison to everything else in our solar system. And if I go back into charts here and sort everything out by radius, so I'm going to zoom in and so here's our planet Earth, this is Venus, and then we have Mars, Mercury, and here come the dwarf planets. So the largest one is Pluto, then we have Aries, then we have a few more, uh, one of them is Maki Maki, one of them is Haumea, but look at that, water ball is right here, it's actually one of the largest dwarf planets now, or at least it can be compared to one of the largest dwarf planets in our solar system, if we actually were to collect all of the water from our planet Earth and to put it into one large um, object, which would be, of course, very similar to a dwarf planet and would very likely have a spherical shape as well, because um, ices, when there's so much mass, will actually create a spherical shape. And so that's essentially how big and how large our oceans and our ice caps are if you were to place them all into one and compare them to other objects in our solar system. 
Now, hopefully this is as mind blowing to you as it was to me when I did this the first time. And hopefully now you learn something else about our solar system, our water, and of course our planet Earth. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video, and don't forget to like this video as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to explore something else really, really awesome using both Space Engine or Universe Sandbox 2 or possibly some other game that we haven't tried yet. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. Bye-bye.